Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to start the project lectures. So let's look at that, EE 2902, week 6, lecture 2. So project, okay. So you can say project lectures. So let's look at the schedule and go from there. We do 2902. Syllabus. Okay, so if you look at the syllabus, uh, we are. So we're starting this checkpoint one uh, down here. That's fine. Okay. So let's look at what the project is about. So we're going to 2902, course project, neuron model on an FPGA. All the relevant stuff is here. So let's look at uh, the project description first and look at checkpoint one. Okay. So this is the project description. So in this project, what we'll do is we'll implement neurons on the DE1 board. The purpose of this project is actually twofold. Uh, the main thing is to acqu acquaint you with commercial protocols, specifically I squared C. This is one of the 8-bit criterion. That's not why we put this in here. Right? It's a very useful uh, tool for you to understand complex digital, digital systems. Right. So here is the block diagram of the project. And let's do a rotate clockwise there. Let's zoom in. So some of these components should be familiar to you. How do you implement a clock buffer? PLL. So that's done. Check mark. Okay. So, and there are two PLLs here. One a buffer and a audio PLL. We'll talk about this later. But in essence, your project consists of two main checkpoints. Okay. This is the first checkpoint. So, and this is the second checkpoint. And the goal of this is where is your neuron model? Hmm. How come I don't see a I guess it's in here, but whatever, right? So let's look at what you ultimately get, right? So what you ultimately get from this project is so here is the model of the neuron. And I'll demonstrate this, uh, model some simulation. Ah, okay. So I'll demonstrate this in lab next week, okay? So this is what you're going to see at the output from your audio codec digital to analog converter, right? So again, if you go into this um, uh, folder, all the information is there. Oops, actually, I'll leave. Let the user's manual load up. Okay. So here, the 24-bit audio codec on your board, if you look at your DE1 board, it has three audio connectors, all right? This line out here is connected to a D2A, digital to analog converter. So what you will do is I'll give you, oops, uh, checkpoint one, checkpoint two, I'll give you this neuron model. Here it is, the VHDL, okay? This is actually an Euler's method realization of a nonlinear differential equation. We'll talk about it later when we get to checkpoint uh, three, but this will be given to you. So here, this is from your checkpoint two, okay? This thing, the audio codec controller. So the ADC, DAC controller. So what you do in checkpoint three is you just take this, hook it up, do a port map at the top level, and if you've done this correctly and your checkpoint one correctly, what you should see is this. So it's a nonlinear oscillation. The neuron is bursting. Okay. So that's the goal of this project. Uh, however, let's see, where's the project description? Uh, there are two main components to this. Actually, this is the main component, this checkpoint one, the I squared C interface. This is how you configure the audio codec. 
let's see there are some rotate clockwise rotate clockwise rotate clockwise so the first thing you should do is you should print out this document which is the project description right uh, oh by the way uh, here is the nonlinear differential equations set of differential equations which is implemented by this VHDL okay it's pretty simple actually Okay, so blah blah blah. There's some information on this. There's some so key zero is the global reset. Okay, this is something on loop back. I'll talk about this later as we get to it. Right. But this is important. Uh, before we begin, you should first let us, that is the instructors know if you're working with a partner or working on this project in, uh, individually. Okay. So I need you to fill in this sheet below with this whatever pertinent information and hand it to me before the start of next lab. Okay. So if you're working on it individually, and if you're or if you're going to work on it in groups, I would not recommend you work on this project individually unless you really know what you're doing. It's very it's very difficult. I mean, it's okay. Whatever it is, it's difficult. Right? No more than two people per group, though. Okay. Having said that, what is the first yeah, question? Yes, yes. Ideally, that's how you do it. That is, each partner work on the. Huh, I'm laughing because that <laughs> that can be that's usually disastrous when you have a multiple person team and unless you agree on the interfaces and protocols perfectly when you connect the two modules together, they will not work. Okay, that's to get you into the habit of thinking in teams. But uh, Colin Stapleton, Andrew Shabulski, they all worked on this project on their own. Right, they finished it no problem. But it's it's challenging. Just, I'm just warning you. If you're going to work on it individually, you're going to pull your hair out, most likely. Right. So, okay, but I need this sheet before the start of next week's lab. Okay, so next week is when you will officially start checkpoint one. But I recommend you start on it ASAP. So the uh, all the information is in the document. I'm going to repeat this because it's like kind of like useless. Um, but I am going to talk about so the digital systems website. Here, like I keep saying, is very. Oh, okay, I have to fix this. So it's not my web anymore. It's good to know. I'll fix it. Mm. But anyway, so what I'm going to talk about today is checkpoint one, okay? And the overall, and also I'll give you tidbits on the overall idea behind the project. Mm. Uh, let's see. Something very important. There is absolutely no late checkoffs for project checkpoints, right? So how is it going to work? Uh, so let's see. So how are the project going to work? So let's look at the. Uh, so you're supposed to start on this this week. Like I said, it's fine in the sense uh, you should start working on the project this weekend or ideally tonight, right? You have to understand what the project is about. Step one is understand the problem. Step two is devise a plan. Step three is carry out the plan. Step four is check your answer. So step one is understand the problem at hand, what you're trying to do, right? Be very clear on the project goals. If you're not, you're screwed, right? Literally. Uh, step two is devise a plan. Like I keep telling all my students, uh, we professors utilize all these steps. I mean, ideally we should. At least I, mean, I do. I utilize all these steps in all my work. And trust me, if you, any of these, if you don't understand the problem, you're screwed. Right? Devise a plan, carry out the plan. I've also have made mistakes in my undergraduate career where I've not understood the problem to be solved. I tried solving it, and it's been disastrous. I make this mistake occasionally here and there, but it's reduced a lot. Right? Carry out the plan and check your answer. Okay. So for you, so start on this ASAP. Start ASAP right after class. It's a good idea. Right? Because I don't know if you're going to work on it individually, if you're going to work on it in a group, get the name of your partner, right? So understand the problem. So this is one for for you. Read um, project docs inside out, right? Device a plan. Uh, block diagrams. Signal types. Bus widths. All details, okay. Notice 
there is no VHDL yet. It's all paper. Okay. If you start like typing away in quarters, you're screwed. I can guarantee you. You're, you're dead. Okay. Carry out the plan. VHDL. Quarters. Okay. Check your answer. Simulate. And preferably and signal tap. Right? Not R. So the simulator is model sim. Okay. And hardware verify although you can be like wait a minute i don't have the audio codec module in model sim you can still simulate a lot in model sim on hardware verify this is signal tap okay so this is how you this is how we should go from now on 2002 should you should be consumed by the project right do not do this the day before it's due okay number one number two don't copy like if you copy i'll find out and then i'll give you an f Right, don't copy like the I squared C design from online. It's a bad idea. Right? I can find out easily. And don't go on the Altera forum and ask them for help. Because guess what? I also go around in the Altera forum. And I'll find out. Okay. And they're not going to help you. They'll be like, uh, so they'll start asking questions. They'll know from the way you ask it's a class assignment. Right? They will, you can try, but don't. Right? I'll find out. Okay. All right. So basically, uh, project checkpoint one, due dates. So getting back to that, uh, there is absolutely no late checkoffs for the project checkpoints. Uh, test, uh, oops. oh, test two is in week eight. So you, so basically, your project checkpoint is due in a checkpoint is due in a couple of weeks, right? It is doable if you spend time on it every day. If you don't, it's not doable. Right? So get into the habit of uh, planning ahead. For example, I'm writing a textbook that's due in October, but I work on it like five hours a day. Right? You you can't finish it or else it's, forget it. You gotta plan ahead, right? So that's what this is telling you to do. I mean, this is uh, training you to do. Okay. So having said that, let's start with in this lecture. Uh, we'll not start the I squared C state machine design. Let's try to understand. Well, technically the lecture from uh, the previous class, but whatever. Let's try to understand the I squared C design spec. Okay. So what does this mean? So we don't need this anymore. This is the project information sheet. You need to turn this in before the start of next lab. Okay. So in checkpoint one, so overall, what you're going to do is you're going to configure this audio codec, all right? So if you have the DE1 board uh, with you, you can actually, uh, I think Ezra always carries it with him. Yeah, so you can. So here it is, right? 24-bit audio codec. The small chip is the codec. What does codec stand for, do you know? Coder decoder, right? So coder is the analog to digital converter, which we're not going to use, except we're going to do what is called as a loopback test. That's why we'll use the ADC, just to make sure that our data path is configured properly. And you should always do a loopback test whenever you're dealing with audio, this your, or anything in general. When you're dealing with ADDs and DDAs, right? A good rule of thumb is do what is called as loopback. That is, take the output of the ADD, connect it to the input of the DDA, feed in a signal like a sinusoid from here. See, and I'll show it to you in lab next week. See if you get the sinusoid out. That means your data path is working correctly, right? Your ADC is configured properly. Your DAC is configured properly. Make sense? That's what we aim for at the end of checkpoint two before we put the neuron model, okay? So checkpoint one is I squared C. Checkpoint two is configuring the ADC, DAC. And checkpoint three is just putting the neuron model in there. Okay? Checkpoint three is very easy. It's like, if you know VHDL, it's like 10 minutes. If you don't, it's like three hours. Well, by the time you get to checkpoint three, you will know VHDL better, right? So anyway, here is the audio codec. So in the D D one user's mind itself, there's a schematic, and I've copied that schematic in here. Okay. So basically, in checkpoint one, what you're going to be configuring is this I squared C. Okay. How do I know I have to configure this? Go back to here. Uh, that is your project folder. Notice you have a data sheet. You should print this out data sheet and use this as your pillowcase from now. Just sleep on it. It's like, ah, oh, you gotta know this inside out, right? So let's look at this. So the audio codec interface. Now something about this audio codec. The way this audio codec works is you can configure. So here's a block diagram. It's a very nice codec. So again, in checkpoint one, we're gonna be basically mucking around with this, right? The control interface. But then the question that should pop into your head is, before I get into that, um, 
one of the things about this audio codec is you can configure this interface as you're sending data. For example, you can adjust the volume of your line out. Okay, let me ask you this. What peripheral is line out usually connected to? Speaker or headphones. What about mic in? Well, mic, right? So we'll be actually using line in and line out. We won't be using mic in. Well, the neuron model is the data is going to go through line, go out of line out. But for the loop back test, we'll just be using line in and line out. Why are we not using mic? We're just not using mic. Right? No reason. Okay. So getting back, uh, you could, for example, adjust the volume through the I squared C as you're sending in data. But we're not doing that in the sense we're going to instantiate the I squared C and then just continuously send data. Okay. That's why in checkpoint one. You look at the modules, one of the modules is a delay counter. So clock buffer, you should know how to do, right? So it's just 50 megahertz clock buffer. So one of the things you could do is you could design this like tonight and test it if it works and stuff. Oh, by the way, make sure you have a nice project folder, all right? Uh, I mean, nice in the sense that there are no spaces in the path names. It's very clear, right? So the top level, you could probably call it neuron model, for example. And then within the neuron model top level, you could instantiate a clock buffer. Make sense? And check if that works by a signal tap and model. That will be a very good litmus test before the end of this week. All right. Anyway, the thing, I, the thing I've asked you to do is do a delay counter. So we'll start the ADC DAC controller, which is checkpoint two, uh, long after we reset the system. So and there is, and it's described here. Hence, this module asserts a reset signal 40 milliseconds after system reset. What is system reset? Key zero. Okay. So you need to design a module that asserts a signal 40 milliseconds after pressing key zero. So figure out how to do that. These two you should be able to do before the start of next week's lab. If you can, it means you're on good footing for start on the working on the project. Okay. You have an idea of how to use quarters, you have an idea of like how to use the PLL. The delay counter implies you can design good VHDL, right? And if you signal tap this or see the results in model sim, you're, you're all set, okay? You're set to get in with the audio codec controller. Do not start the audio codec controller till you finish all this. But let's say you want to paralyze it, you want this to be efficient, one of you will design the clock buffer and explain it to your partner. The other per person will design the delay counter and explain it to the person who designed the clock buffer. And while you're designing this, both of you will read this, the data sheet. Is that clear? That's how you paralyze it. You got to think. Right? So anyway, so this is the block diagram. So one of the first questions you should ask yourself is what? So now that it's, I've explained that, that this data path is actually parallel, but we're going to be serializing it. That is, we're initializing I squared C and then sending data. That's not what is important. I told you that for I squared C, okay, if you look at the user's manual, let's go up and look at the audio codec controller. I showed you there is an I squared C S clock and I squared C DAC. All right, we'll talk about what these are later. However, looking at this, Data sheet, what do you see? I've told you that this is that control interface, right? So what do you see? So what comes to your mind when I show you this, the I squared CS clock and I squared CS dot is a control interface. And look at the block diagram. When you look at this control interface, what do you see? So what happened? So this I told you in this uh, schematic picture of the interface to the Wolfson, these are the signals. Okay. When you look at the data sheet of the block diagram, as a, as opposed to looking at uh, as opposed to when you look at the data sheet, the block diagram in the data sheet, what do you see? What comes to your mind? Huh? Nah, yeah, but anything else? 
what is i mean something more obvious than that yes that's it you need two more signals correct however that's where you got to read stuff or right? read the data sheet so it tells you or if you look at the user's manual so now having said that uh, looking at the data sheet you see there are two more signals more than csb now you go back to the user's manual look at the schematic this is how you if you will decipher the information that is given to you right any embedded platform you have will have a board manual and associated data sheet for the peripheral so you got to go back and forth and figure out how to configure it okay so now having seen that uh, connor's observation that there are two more signals what are those two more signals connor what do you think what do you think are the two more signals you need z is csb more than csb that's correct so now what you do is you go back to the board manual and what do you see here do you see those signals here they're connected to ground so how do you figure out what connecting them to ground implies how do you figure that out or where do you figure that out from where do you look that up in the user's manual is it in the user's manual what does the user's manual tell you huh how to use what the de1 it doesn't tell you how to use audio codec correct it's got some information here so what document has information on what these pins do the data sheet that's the word it's the data sheet which will tell you so let's go into the data sheet and if you notice uh, blah 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 digital audio interface or it master uh, let's see uh, software control interface that's where it is so here it is uh, blah 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 Okay, so here, selection of serial control interface. The serial control interface may be selected to operate either in two wire or three wire mode. This is achieved by setting the state of the mode pin. Okay, so Connor's observation that mode that both mode and CSB are connected to ground, coupled with this table, tells you what. It's always going to be a two wire interface. I squared C. Make sense? That's how it's I squared C. Okay, everything you do must be backed up by sound logic. You should not assume anything. Assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. Right? Do not assume anything, ever. It's also the easy, quick path to getting fired or killing people. Right? Like you assume stuff, you build stuff. No. Okay. All right. So is that clear? Two-wire interface, no three-wire. Impossible. Right? On the DE one, just not possible. Okay, clear. All right. Next, what do we look at? So, what is the CSB connected to? Ground. So, this is the slave address of your audio codec, right? So now it gets into I squared C, and if you actually look in the user's manual, I squared C read address is zero x thirty four. I squared C right address is 0x35. Okay. So if you look at it, let's see. So you have to get, let's get into the details of I squared C protocol, right? But the bottom line is uh, the CSB functionality, the two wire MPU interface address selection, since CSB is hard coded to zero, this is the address, okay? And we'll talk about this later. But now, this is the picture that you need to understand. Okay. So, looking at this picture, can I zoom in over here? So it's two wire interface. That's why I'm looking at this, not the three wire. Right? Forget it. So, if you look at the checkpoint documentation. I've described this here. See, it's all here, right? So, and it's information on the tri-state buffer. So, you should read this, okay? But here is a generic I squared C protocol. This is a generic one, right? 
it's a bidirectional protocol because it's bidirectional because you can transmit and receive data on the SDA or the data line, okay? By way of tri-state buffers. We'll talk about this in more detail next lecture, okay? Because I want you to read this first. But the bottom line is, a specific I squared C protocol, the, spe the specifics of the protocol as related to the audio codec is given right here. It's more detailed. Right? But basically, you have a read address, read write bit, wait for acknowledge, data bits. So you transmit how many bits of data before the acknowledge, just looking at this picture. These are the kind of questions you should ask yourself. Eight bits, okay, and then acknowledge. So if you notice, how many bits should be the read address? Then? No. Look at this picture, man. Eight bits acknowledge. Eight bits acknowledge. So how many bits is this together? Eight. What does this mean? R hype slash W bar. Yes, exactly, like Ezra said. Write is active low. You want to write to the I squared C, you want to configure it, you pull this bit low. So there's one bit. So how many bits is your read address? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes? Okay? So translate this binary. So the... In the CSB state is zero, this is the address, yes? But translate this binary number into hex. So the problem with this is there is one bit missing, okay? So here, all peripherals on the two wire bus respond to the start and shift to the next eight bits, which is seven bit address plus read write bit, okay? So if you notice, in your DE1 user's manual, since your CSB bit is tied to ground, you can think about this as, come on, 0x, I mean 0011, which is 3, 010, 0, 0 again, making 8 bits, which is what? 3, 4, yes? You see that? Hex 34, yes? You see that or no? So if you go back to the user's manual, x34, that's where it comes from. So these are the kind of things you should, I mean, uh, these are the kind of things you should look, you should look for as you go through all this documentation and this takes a lot of practice. Yeah, question? Because of what it said here. That's why. Well, I, that's the thing. This kind of thing takes practice. So I just combine both the information. Right? And many documents are not this clear. Right? If you think this is cl not clear, well, you're wrong. Right? It is very clear. Okay. Now, the question you got to ask yourself, though, is what bit of my 8-bit data do I transmit first? The least significant or the most significant? And does this picture actually tell you? You understand the question? No, no, no. You can't look at it from here. This is the data that's being transmitted, yes? So out of your 8-bit data, which bit comes out first? The LSB or the MSB? Oh, no, it's not. I didn't say that. The LSB has nothing to do with the mode. That's the CSB. Connor said something which is about right. Why is it MSB? Where did it have 8 zero? No. These are just notes. It just tells you that these are the control data versus the address. It does not tell you which bit is going out first. Which data? Where? 
there's a name for this picture. What is it called? Yeah, the timing diagram tells you. So what goes out first? So what kind of Indianness is this? Big Indian. Big Indian protocol. You send the most significant bit first. Yes? These are the kind of things you should pick up. Okay? Is that clear? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop the lecture here because I want you to read through this. Right? Okay, let me. So here is how you configure. So what you do is let me finish the lecture. Actually, I have 15 minutes. So I'll take five more minutes and talk about two things. Number one, the way you configure I squared C is you send in an address and you send in configuration data. So there is more details here. So here are all the registers. Okay. So this is the address you send, 15 through 9, uh, 15 through 8, if you will, and then data, 7 through 0, okay? So you send the I squared C address, 0x34, wait for acknowledge. Step, and then you send which register you want to configure, that address, then the data, okay? Of course, you have to wait for acknowledges in the middle. Is that clear? Finite state machine. Make sense? So to configure all these registers, that's what your checkpoint one is all about. Now, timing is very important. You're interfacing to a physical device. So think about all this tonight, all right? It's point number one. Point number two, you have to look at the audio signal path to understand the analog portion of the de design, right? So here is the analog interface on the line in. So what do you see? Looking at this, what all do you see? Op amp. What else comes to mind? Filter cap. What kind of a filter is this? Low pass. That's right. What kind of a filter is this? What happens as the frequency increases on the circuit? What happens to the capacitor? Short. So what happens to high frequency signals? They don't get amplified. So what kind of a filter is this? It's an active low pass filter, right? Why don't okay? Why don't you want a high pass filter? Intuitively, why don't you want a high pass filter? What do you what is this interface? No, even more simpler than that. What are you interfacing to? What kind of signals? Audio. So what are the what is the range of frequency for human hearing? Audio signals. Twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz. Okay. So you don't want a high pass filter. You don't want to pass high frequency signals. You want to pass low frequency signals. You want to filter out the high frequency signals. Okay. So it makes sense that they're all low pass filters. But these are the kind of things you should uh, pick up, right? So in the sense, you got to read this. You don't need the microphone input to look at that. We're not using that data path. But if you have taken 2050, 2060, you should have, right? Yes, before 2002, 2070. Yes, you have taken all those courses, right? This is all should be cakewalk for you. So oh, yeah, I know this, I know this, I know this, I know this. That's why you take all those classes, right? Okay, so what you should do now is prep up for checkpoint one. Right? Under the understanding of what the project is about. So work on that. Again, uh, design on a partner first and then start working on this. Work on this every day, at least a couple of hours, focused work. Right? Or else it's become very difficult. And after a couple of hours, when your brain, brain starts turning to mush and you can't think anymore, just forget about this and go to a different thing. That's how you work on all this. Okay. And I keep telling this to all my classes. If you think that you're done after college, with thinking you're in the wrong profession right you got to keep thinking the only thing after college is you if you're good you'll get paid right so that's all it is and if you're good you won't have you won't get fired so you don't have to worry about job security if you're good right you, people when i was young it was the dumbest advice i got they're like oh yeah, once you get a degree once you get a degree from berkeley you're set no you're not set right? your life is just beginning you're gonna work like a dog the rest of your life. Right? This is what it is. You signed up for this. Right? I mean, it will become more and more fun. You'll get paid more and you'll have time to do things what you want if you're good at time management. But 
uh, this is this is it, all right? So don't get into your head that oh, I'm done after this. No, no, it gets more and more difficult. But you will learn a lot more, so you'll become experts at like time management and thinking. So you spend a lot less time doing mundane things. Like you'll, if you do this, writing state machines will become second nature. Just go. Bzz. So yeah, that's that's how this helps. If you're thinking that you'll you're done after you get your degree, ah, I can just relax. Sip mojitos on the beach, beach. Yeah, maybe if you become like really rich, and you be, be a, make the next Google, you sell your own company. Yeah, you could retire. I know people who are retired even now. I know a guy who's 35 who's retired. Right? They're like a couple of billion dollars in the bank. But trust me, he'll get back to work after a year. You just can't retire. Right? So anyway, yeah. So get uh, get your get your reading phase on. Uh, that's it. We're done.